Hi, my name is Ken, and this is Let's Code a Mud in C++11, part 16. Uh, in this part, I want to talk a little bit about C++11 smart pointer classes. That is unique pointer, shared pointer, and weak pointer. Uh, and we're going to do that without so much working on the mud in this part. I'm sorry, I promise we'll do more in the next part. But uh, in this part, I just want to take a little bit of a detour and talk about the C++11 language features and, and when to use them, maybe when not to use them, and how they work and how to use them efficiently and effectively. Uh, so we used unique pointer in the last part uh, to basically to do polymorphism, to, to store a pointer to a base class uh, and be able to call virtual functions and then still delete it at the end of the day. So we, we used unique pointer as a bare pointer that had a destructor. Uh, which is great. It's great at that. Um, but unique pointer uh, also has a couple other things in it. So first of all, it's non-copyable. Like our uh, like our socket class in the server part, uh, unique pointer has no copy constructors, but it does have move constructors. So you can return it from a function. You can use it in an expression. Um, you can move it explicitly by using standard move on a null value. Um, but you want to make sure that you only ever have one copy of a unique pointer at a time because that destructor is going to delete the pointer and you don't want to double delete it or you don't want to use after delete. Um, so unique pointer, true to its name, needs to remain unique. Um, make unique we used here uh, and I do want to point out because I, I neglected to in the previous part, I'm so sorry, that um, make unique is C++14 and not C++11. So if you try to use it here and your program wasn't able to compile, that is totally on me, that's my bad. Um, the equivalent code in C++11 um, is not that different, you just have to uh, separate out creating the pointer from creating the uh, the unique pointer. You do them as two different actions here. And this is exactly the same, it's exactly equivalent, and it's also exception safe because this constructor of unique pointer is no accept, it does not throw. Um, so you could do this or you could do make unique and they're they're a hundred percent equivalent um, but if you're in C++ 11 and not 14 or higher you you have to do this uh, now we'll go back to make unique because it is it's a little shorter and a little nicer to read um, okay so that's make unique um, so we said uh, that creates a pointer that cannot be copied so we're in a little bit of a pickle if let's say for the sake of argument we had two verbs hello and hi and we wanted them to for whatever reason be the same action let's say we wanted them to to share some state like the number of times the uh, the verb has been called or something something like that um, so we can't do this we can't do what I'm trying to do which is is to pass it down into both because then it, it invokes the copy constructor which doesn't work and if it did work, then it would double delete, and we don't want that anyway. Uh, so what we need is we need a pointer that can be copied. Um, and there's a class for that. It's called shared pointer. Um, so unlike uh, unique pointer, shared pointer has a little bit of uh, bookkeeping and record keeping under the hood. Unique pointer, unique pointer is 100% zero overhead. It's all uh, compile time syntax. It's all in inlined header file stuff. Um, the size of a unique pointer is the same size as a bare pointer. There is there is nothing to it uh, that would compile to assembly that was any different than if you were using it correctly. It just unique pointer helps you to use it correctly, um, which is is part of why it's so great. Um, but shared pointer does have overhead. Shared pointer has two reference counts inside it. It has a, a counter of a number of shared pointers and a counter of number of shared plus weak pointers. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, that it uses to determine when it is is safe to delete the uh, the shared pointer, the thing it points to. So, for example, in this case, um, we're creating a, a local here. So it 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 starts with a reference count of one. Um, then we we pass it into the map. So we up the reference count to two because we're making a copy. Up it to three. Our original hello action goes out of scope. So the number of references goes down to two. And then when this map gets deleted. Uh, it'll go down to, to 1 and then to 0, and when the reference count reaches 0, then it deletes the object. So it's keeping track of, of how many pointers are out there, how many different ways to reach this object are out there, and when they're all gone, then I know it's safe to delete the object. I, I can never accidentally delete the object while it may potentially still be in use. And that's that's a nice feature to have. It's a nice little bit of safety if you have to use pointers. Um, 
I prefer that my pointers have a well-defined owner and a well-defined life cycle and lifetime. Um, but if if that has to be more than one thing, like in this case, having more than one owners, uh, that, that is potentially legitimate. Um, so you look at this and you look at the reference counting and you think, hey, wait a minute, this is kind of like garbage collection, right? This is, you're, you're having an object and you're holding off from it dying uh, until the last thing has dropped a reference to it. That's exactly garbage collection, right? And uh, I would say yes, sort of. Um, so reference counting is a, a strategy for garbage collection, but it's not a particularly good one. Um, and one reason is, is reference cycles. So imagine I had some object A, uh, and, and that object A pointed to B, and, and uh, uh, I, B was an object that pointed to A, right? Uh, so this would be a cycle. Um, and let's say they both belong to some object C, and C got deleted, so A and B were never reachable again, but because A pointed to B, and B pointed to A, both pointers would have a reference count of one, um, and they would never get deleted and they get leaked. Uh, so it's it's not it's not good from a garbage collection point of view. It, it does it does pre prevent the um, free the the use after free case right. So that in that case, it prevents you from getting a seg fault, um, but it doesn't prevent you from leaking memory and and. Also, it allows you to have those kind of reference cycles. It allows you to have that kind of spaghetti code where an object's getting created in one place and passed to another place and owned by who the heck knows what, and it's all over your program, and you've lost control. You've lost uh, understanding of the, the ownership hierarchy and, and the life cycle, and you've lost, you've lost understanding of the type reference hierarchy, and both of those things are very important, and we're going to talk about that when we talk about architectural patterns a little later in this series. Um, but just just understand from that point of view, it's like you're treating C++ as if it were Java. You're writing Java code in C++, and I don't I don't recommend that. It's it's gonna bite you. Um, so shared pointer is is not a magic savior from that point of view. It it just it just has some legitimate use cases around uh, potentially multiple owners, like in this case. Uh, one other case where shared pointer is actually super super helpful. Uh, is dealing with callbacks. So again, going back to our socket code in, in our server uh, and all those asynchronous functions, if we had used uh, shared pointers in that in those callbacks, we wouldn't have had to do the the fun dances we had to do with the uh, the done reading function. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, let me go back into this. We we did this thing where we were trying to figure out if there's still an async uh, function out there, if if there's still a write call out there. Um, or if there's no more writes and there's no more reads, then go ahead and delete delete myself, remove myself from a collection of objects. Um, and that could have been accomplished with shared pointers, perhaps a little more simply. I was trying to avoid that at that point um, because shared pointers do have a little bit of overhead and if you can't avoid it, it's nice to avoid it. And, and we were able to, this wasn't a problem. Um, but uh, a lot of examples for Boost ASIO code in their documentation do use shared pointers, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's perfectly legitimate uh, for for callbacks, especially where where the, each callback is potentially an owner. You're extending the lifetime of the object. Um, that's that's a good use for shared pointer. Um, so a couple things to be aware of when you're using shared pointers, just to, to use them correctly, to use them carefully. Um, first of all, make shared. Uh, in this case, unlike make unique, make shared actually does something. And it's important to use rather than using shared pointer and hello actions constructor separately because they both take up memory. Make shared allocates that memory together. They live together. The, the reference counts live right next to the object. Um, so you're not you're not fragmenting your heap, and you're not doing two malloc's and two freeze for uh, what only needed to be one. Uh, so make shared is nice from that point of view. Also, passing shared pointers around. So let's say I have uh, let's say I have foo and bar, and um, I have a shared pointer, and I call foo with it, right? And I have a function foo that can take a shared pointer. Uh, let's just say any arbitrary grammar action, right? And I do some collection dot insert action. Can anyone tell what I did wrong here? Um, I, I passed action around like it were a value type, and you might think, well, it's a pointer, and you can point, you can pass pointers around as if they were a value type. There's nothing wrong with that. It's it's a small object. 
It's just two reference counts in this case and a pointer. How large could that be to make copies of? That's not what I'm worried about. Um, the problem is that the reference counts in shared pointer are atomic. Increasing it and decreasing the reference counts in a shared pointer are atomic operations and may potentially take up more CPU um, than, than not updating the reference counts. Uh, why do I say that? And what does atomic mean? Well, let's say I have two threads. I have thread A and thread B, and in both of them, I'm trying to make a copy of the same shared pointer. We need to make sure we don't corrupt the, the reference counts in that case. We need to make sure that the threads uh, do their operations distinctly. One of them increments, then the other one increments. Um, and that requires, if not some explicit locking, maybe your processor has atomic instructions on it, it still requires some synchronization of state. Your CPU has to, in order just for logic to behave itself, your CPU has to uh, communicate between the two threads to make sure that the, the state of the reference count is synchronized and one of them goes first and one of them goes second, which could be a performance penalty, which if you use shared pointers a lot in a lot of functions all around your program, that could add up. So don't make a copy if you don't have to. Use a reference. There's nothing wrong with this. This is just like a reference of any other value type. Um, just because you're using shared pointer, you don't have to think, well, what if, okay, I'm in this function, but I don't have my own copy of the shared pointer. What if all the other shared pointers go out of scope and the object dies? That's not a thing. Your calling function is a shared pointer, right? Your calling function is a shared pointer and it's not gonna go out of scope and it's in your thread. You don't have to worry. It's like any other value type, it's just as safe. Um, so from a safety point of view, that's good. The other thing is, uh, sometimes you don't even need a shared pointer at all, right? Let's this. Let's say I'm just doing the thing with the action. You don't even need the shared pointer to do this. You can do this on any object, whether or not it's in a shared pointer. And then you just do a little fix up here. Much better, right? So if you can do this, uh, if you don't even need the shared pointer, I'd say don't even bother with the shared pointer. Treat it like any other value type. All right. Um, last thing we need to talk about, that was shared pointers, uh, put links in the documentation, or links to the documentation in the show notes, but let's talk about weak pointers real quick. Uh, what is a weak pointer? A weak pointer is like a shared pointer, it has a reference count, but the weak pointer itself does not necessarily uh, increment the reference count. A weak pointer says, I I'm kind of watching, I'm observing, and if the object's still alive when I get to it, well then that's great. Um, if the object's not still alive, um, then I can live with that, but I don't want to prevent the object from dying. I just want to be an observer, a guy on the side. Um, and in order to use it, you can't just say uh, action do the thing, right? You can't treat it as a pointer because it doesn't have, it, it doesn't affect the reference count. It could be dead, right? You have to check. Uh, so the way you do that is you try to upgrade it to a shared pointer. So uh, let's call it a strong action. And it's action.lock. That creates uh, a shared pointer. And that, it tries to increment the reference count. And uh, if the reference count was positive, was greater than zero, then it succeeds and it creates a new shared pointer. If the reference count was zero and the object was deleted, then it fails. And you check first. You say, if strong action, then do the thing. And you also make sure you deal with the failure case. You, what, is it okay to fail? Um, if it's not okay to fail, why are you using a weak pointer in the first place? You use a shared pointer and keep that reference count up. So um, weak pointer is uh, particularly useful in callbacks, like those async callbacks. You might say, um, I got notified that all the, the bytes got written to, to the socket, uh, but you might want to say, oh, don't, if the socket goes away, that's okay. The socket went away, so this is probably an error anyway. Just dispose of the callback. Uh, weak pointers are really good in that, in that case for callback. I, I'm having a hard time thinking about any other time I might use a weak pointer. You might be tempted to use them as a, an observer pointer, like instead of a reference elsewhere in your program. Um, but that raises its own issues. Um, uh, and we'll talk about observers in a later part. Observers, are, to me, are, are really, really tricky to get right. Uh, but otherwise... I'll put some links to documentation. These are shared pointer and weak pointer, which I wouldn't use that much, and unique pointer, which there's nothing wrong with. Unique pointer is awesome. Um, so my name is Ken. This was Let's Code a Mud in C++11 part 16. I promise we'll do more mud work in the next part. We'll, we'll dive a little deeper. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching.